When I studied law, um, and I and I knew that there is a, when there is an allegation that a person was killed uh, because he was shot directly in the chest, and we have a corpse, we have a dead person, um, that was, as far as I understood and studied, enough for an investigation to be launched. Um, if you have a footage of uh, the shooting, <coughs> well, that's even better. I mean, that means that we will know who's the shooter and, uh, and what was exactly the position of uh, the victim and, and, and the assailant. In the Abu Rahmi case, we have three different cameras documenting the killing from three angles. And yet, the military police and the military prosecution decided not to launch an investigation. Okay, so this basically, this I think for me is one, the one, the single most important frame um, in all of the f documentation of this um, of this case. It's a it's a deinterlaced video still from David Reeb's footage. It shows the the flight path of the canister that hit Basim Abu Rahme, who is standing right by David. <laughs> It's one frame taken out of the footage, uh, but I think it's crucial because this really was the way we managed to um, really con reconstruct the, the scene. It's a 40 millimeter tear gas canister, but it's also, uh, it has an extended range. It's a, quite a heavy aluminum base, like an interior aluminum and a, and a very, very uh, hard plastic covering. From our analysis of the video footage and all of the information we have on the, the individual demonstration that Basim Abu Rahman was killed in, as far as we're concerned, we question even the decision, the, the initial decision to even use tear gas against the Palestinian protesters in that scenario. David Reeves' uh, videography style is to film very large chunks of footage. He kind of just keeps going. Uh, he doesn't stop and start. And you can really see that he follows the demonstration, the parade, uh, going throughout, you know, throughout the village and reaching the barrier. And uh, it's a continuous shot. You can really see there was no Palestinian uh, violence. We have two other cameras that were capturing the events. The first is uh, by Bassam Hamed, a Palestinian uh, resident of Bilin, who's also a kind of a, a news uh, photographer. And another videographer who was actually a Betelem volunteer called Oda Abu Rahme, was filming further from the back. 
Remember that at the time we did the research, we didn't have access to the other end. Um, and so we had to use aerial photographs, we had to use various other measurements like GIS um, measurements in order to ascertain the distance. Bassam actually stood here and David Reeves stood with him because it was quite a good position for filming as well. Um, and they could see obviously what was happening. When you look at the at the approximate position of the soldiers, you see that it's you know it's almost on a plane. Um, you know we're more or less on, on the same kind of level. They watched the videos that we've supplied them with, the three videos, and they have tailored this bizarre explanation, this bizarre narrative that the shooter has shot according to the regulations in 60 degrees to the ground. And because the, the canister hit the highest wire of the separation fence, it changed course, changed angle, and hit Bassem on the chest. I called it back then um, cartoon physics. 60 degrees, even if the soldier stands very close to the fence, would go above the fence. And because the canister, type of canister that we're dealing with, has the capability of flying uh, almost 500 meters, 400 meters or so, and Bassem was standing about 20 meters from the soldiers. That means that he was shot point blank directly in an angle that is parallel to the ground. Even if we don't know the shooter's exact location, but we know that, that there were only these people present. So in the end, it actually points to only one individual. But the army claims that they don't know who the shooter was. The, the case of uh, ba the Basim was, um, was very tragic. Of course it's tragic a person was killed, a young person was killed. But he was killed protesting against a war that, while he was protesting, was already declared illegal by the Supreme Court of the State of Israel. And the army would not abide to the ruling. It took four years and two contempt of court motions that were successful before the Israeli army has implemented the order of the Israeli Supreme Court to remove uh, uh, the fence from um, this uh, location on the lands of Belin. I filed the petition on behalf of the village council of Belin and several landowners in 2004, and in 2007 the court has ruled in our favor, actually uh, upholding all our arguments that the route was uh, motivated by expansionist uh, um, ideas for the nearby settlement. It was only in July of 2011 that uh, eventually uh, the route was, uh, um, was um, changed and the uh, fence that was so uh, demonstrated against uh, was uh, removed. But uh, during that time, um, the uh, Abu Ahmed brothers, uh, brother and sister, were killed. Jawahar Abu Ahmed was killed. Um, she was suffocated from, by, by um, tear gas in a, in a Friday demonstration in Belin. And the videos that um, there were of this uh, demonstration had not captured her. The IDF spokesperson, spokesperson immediately alleged that it's all a lie, that she was never in the, in the demonstration just because the several cameras that were there did not capture her there. So today it's, it's not only that the camera and the documentation of the events can help uh, and provide more evidence, but the absence of, it's almost a negative proof that nothing happened.
when we going witness in the Israeli military courts, witness about about people, they charge him like throwing stones, or violent, or pushing soldiers, or great soldiers, or anything like this. But because we filming, and we have the videos, we take our videos and we go to the court directly. Many people was released. They are lucky because they, they have people filming them when, when, uh, when the soldiers uh, start the action or to start the violence against them. And you know, it's like soldiers, if you want to lie, it's okay. But uh, people here cannot, cannot say to the court anything because because the soldiers is coming to be witness against you in the court. But now we have like the small technology what we have, it's like the witness in the same, same, uh, same time, the camera, I mean. When we submit material to the Israeli um, um, police force, for example, or to the, the military police, we always make sure we submit the full uh, files, so all of the rushes that were filmed, we never cut bits. If for some reason there needs to be a, you know, any kind of editing work done, we will make sure we explain that. When, when you look at the faces of judges, when they look at videos, you understand that videos have a huge impact. And yet, even the videos today more and more judges, more and more lawyers understand that even videos do not tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth.